I recently saw a comment on one of my YouTube videos that said, why is this woman so annoyed that smokers can smoke on their private balconies? It doesn't hurt anyone. The comment went on to say how unfair I was for saying that you shouldn't be able to smoke on a balcony, but here is why I stand by that. In March of 2006, the Star Princess was sailing just off the coast of Jamaica. She had 3,813 people on board, and as far as everyone was concerned, this was a pretty normal cruise. Early in the morning, a guest was smoking in their cabin and somehow a cigarette butt managed to fall overboard. At the time, smoking on your balcony was allowed. It's not anymore, but it was in 2006. We don't know if it was dropped. We don't know if it was an accident or on purpose thrown overboard, but the result is the same. The cigarette butt didn't immediately burst into flames, but it did smolder for around 20 minutes. There may have been other things on the balcony that made this worse, but we're not too sure about that. Cruise lines do tell guests not to leave things on the balcony balcony but it does happen sometimes people will put their clothes out there to dry or maybe they'll just come in and they'll forget things and they'll leave them on the balcony in this situation maybe leaving a book or a towel there could become a big problem because the ship was sailing near Jamaica the temperature was around 25 degrees celsius or 77 fahrenheit if the cruise was sailing somewhere cold this may have been the end of it because the fire might not have started it was just before 3 a.m that a crew member smelt smoke up on deck 14 the area was checked but they didn't find any fire at that time. A little later, a guest that was staying in cabin B254 did see an orange glow on their balcony and they set off the fire alarm. The fire started on deck 10, but because of the high winds, once the fire took hold, it spread very fast along the ship and also up to decks 11 and 12. It was a little after 3 a.m. that the captain decided to slow down the ship and to change course slightly in order to stop those high winds from basically fanning the flames. At 3.20, the emergency alarm was sounded. It is a legal requirement that everybody taking a cruise has to do a safety drill when they embark. So everybody had practiced this. They knew where they needed to go. Everybody put on their clothes, put on their life jacket and went down to their master station. The lifeboats and the life rafts were being prepared just as a precaution. It's much better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. A person who was on board at the time said that when we reached the 11th floor, we saw somebody coming through the closed fire door on the port side of the ship. When the door opened, a floor to ceiling thick black cloud of smoke came pouring out and down the hall. I'm sure that the crew were also scared, but every account I read from a passenger very highly praises how well Princess dealt with this. The heat from the fire on the balconies was so hot that in some situations it did shatter the glass in the balcony cabin doors. The glass used in the balcony cabin sliding doors was double glazed and it was a thickness of 25 millimeters. It had been impact tested, but it wasn't fire rated. The cabins of cruise ships are basically built in these big metal boxes and thankfully that meant that once the fire got into the ship, it couldn't really spread. The cruise line also stopped all of the ventilation within the ship in order to try and slow down the fire. Although the fire didn't really spread within the ship, the smoke did and the smoke was the biggest problem for everybody trying to escape and for the crew trying to get everybody out of the area. It was the partitions between the balconies, the balcony furniture and the tiles on the balcony floor that were burning and creating this really thick black smoke. The balconies were classed as outside spaces and as a result they had slightly different fire safety rules compared to the inside. The materials that were used on the partitions and the tiles wouldn't have been allowed inside the cabin because of this thick black smoke that they make when they're burnt. The idea of a fire starting on the balcony wasn't something that really the cruise line had thought of before. On cruise ships, they will have a lot of fire safety drills. They'll have a lot of people trained to deal with fire, but they don't really have a fire on the balcony drill. That's not really something that they're trained to deal with. Cruise ships do have the full fire safety gear on board and they have crew members who are trained to deal with fires. These crew members do also have other jobs. Cruise ships don't just keep a fire crew there just in case, but everybody is trained to a really high standard, they practice all the time, and they know what to do in the case of a fire. If you've cruised on a modern cruise ship, you may be wondering why didn't the sprinklers activate on the balconies? Back in 2006, sprinklers weren't the thing. They didn't need them on their balconies, and as a result, the Star Princess didn't have it now. They did have some sort of misting devices inside, but they didn't really work as planned. Sprinklers and detectors were added to the Star Princess after this, making her safer than ever. After the fire, Carnival Corporation, who owns Princess, made these same changes to all of their ships. They changed the flammable partitions and the tiles, and they added in sprinklers. This happened on all of Carnival's 81 ships, which is 26,000 
400 separate balconies. In total, the fire spread for about an hour and a half and 297 separate cabins were either completely destroyed or damaged. The ship's crew used seven rigged hoses to fight the fire. It was very difficult to fight the fire due to the location of it. Many of the partitions were still in place on the balconies, so they had to fight the fire mostly through the cabins and through the bits of the balconies that were kind of broken. There was one passenger who was found unconscious who unfortunately did die from smoke inhalation. 13 other people also had to be treated for the effects of inhaling smoke. It was around 4.30 in the morning that it was officially announced the fire was out. After the fire, Princess did a lot of tests and they set up a fake balcony where they wanted to basically replicate the fire and see how fast the fire would burn using the current materials. What they did was that they set fire to a towel that was on the back of a chair. It took 2 minutes and 22 seconds for the partitions between the balconies to catch on fire and around 3 minutes the floor also set on fire. It was pretty conclusive that these materials were not good to have on a cruise ship. It was around 10 a.m. that the ship eventually docked in Montego Bay in Jamaica. The passengers that had a cabin on the starboard side that wasn't affected were allowed to go back to their cabin. And amazingly, when everybody was allowed out of their muster stations, breakfast was ready for them. The guests whose rooms had been damaged by the fire were not allowed to go back to their room. They were instead taken to hotels on land. Everybody who was on this cruise received a 100% refund for the cruise fare. They had all of their airfare paid for so that they could get back home. And they were given 25% of their prior cruise fare to use on another princess cruise. Temporary repairs were made to the ship just so that she was seaworthy and she went back over to Germany where she was repaired properly. It was in 2012 that Princess banned smoking on their balconies completely. Almost every major cruise line did this around the same time, but there are still some ships that you can cruise on where you're allowed to smoke on your balcony. If you cruise right now with Costa Cruises, Ada Cruises, Tui Cruises, or Fred Olsen Cruises, you can smoke on your balcony still right now. Some people have argued that there should be smoking and non-smoking balconies the same way that restaurants used to. Although that may solve the problem of secondhand smoke, maybe. I think the problem of the fire is a much bigger one. It definitely could be argued, and I'm sure some people will argue, that it wasn't the fact that smoking was allowed on the balcony that caused this fire, but the fact that somebody broke a rule and they threw the cigarette butt overboard. I would say that anything that reduces the chance of this happening again is a good thing. I don't smoke, I've never smoked, but still, I would hope that most people would agree that this is not good and we should try and avoid this. When the cruise line was analysing this event, they spoke to many passengers and many of them said that they had had cigarette butts fall on their balcony. Some of them had just caused little burn marks on the chairs, but I don't think that this is the first time that this has happened. This is just the first time that it went wrong on such a big scale. As far as I can tell, the person who started this fire was never found. It was never confirmed 100% exactly that this started the fire, but in the absence of other evidence, the cruise line did decide that it was a cigarette butt falling from a higher deck. Watch this video next to find out things you should not do on a cruise, including one thing that you shouldn't bring because it is a fire risk. Watch this next.